we first did this, we were at 500 people. I think when we did our first three day challenge and now we're up to 3,400 members in there. So our goal for tonight, teaching you dribble drive mindset through small sided games. Kurt's going to start off the presentation with some of his favorites. And then I'm going to show some of my favorites. So I'm going to turn it over here to, to Kurt and he, he's going to lead me to what he wants me to do with the screens. Sure. Go ahead, coach. And, and just so you know, guys, this is this is ever evolving. Um, the 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 small sided games are kind of the way that that um, the, the people call when when we have you know one on one games, disadvantage games. That's kind of the catchphrase for it. You know, we always used to call it breakdowns. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, I'm going to go through some some stuff that I've been doing. I haven't got a little bit of film. Uh, Mark and I talked about some of the new stuff I'm trying and, and, and uh, you know, him taking a peek at it the other day. Uh, some of the Russian series that I've shared, uh, you know, on my Twitter a couple times. Some one more games that are kind of new for me. Uh, some two-on-two -two Russian, three-on-three. -three. When I say Russian, that's usually typically refers to, and you'll see coaches, kind of the handoff behind a cone, behind a chair, behind a coach. So, Mark, if you want to go to the next one, let's get right to it. I've got my timer going. I want to be done and in 20 so you could be done in, in about the same amount and we could yeah. be right on time because we are the kings of 90 minutes we we can't get away <laughs> from an hour and a half uh, we uh we keep telling ourselves man we're giving so much we're over it's like we could do 90 minutes and i love it i absolutely love it um this is our slot drive one-on-one -on -one. um you know our orange series uh just because my buddies in orange county and i have kind of played around with these um, and that's a shout out to, to Beck at, at, uh, at, at Hope International. Just, just Mark, that's kind of where we were talking at the Final Four and, and playing around with different ways to play one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we, we start out with a slot drive. And again, obviously, coaches, you'd have two lines up top on this one. And again, there might be two or three players in each line. You might play blue team against a white team. You could, you could make it as competitive as you want to. The thing I love about this is the decision-making that it creates and this might be something after your warm-up series. Maybe you warm up with some shooting or you get going right away, whatever it is. But I, I like to do this right after our quick stretch break and we get into to our breakdowns. And what happens on this, we have a slot drive. The one attacks the slot. And they're told you must get past the third dash with at least one foot. So you're not they're not cheating the game. And so what happens there is now dribble drive principles come into play. <clears throat> Mark calls it his six. We call it a drag one. So the other player slides behind and the reverse pivot action happens in that second picture in the upper right. And then the low picture there, you can see the passer throws it back out. And our decision is pretty simple. We're going to shoot it or we're going to split sprint. And when I say that coaches, I've, I've gone to 100% all in with catch and shoot, catch and drive, catch and move. Um, there are times when there are, times where you allow some cuts to happen but for the most part i'm on a 0.5 decision making philosophy 100 percent. so on this one again the, the throw goes up they play live if they can catch and shoot catch and shoot if the decision is the defender's too close it's a split sprint and this is where your philosophy comes in and, and, and i can give you an example of you may have a shooter that you're talking about hey you're playing off the shot and everything else comes from there or you're playing off the drive when you start recognizing strengths. But early on, if they're open, let it rip. This is just let it fly. If the defender's too close, we're going to split sprint. Mark, do you want to go to the next one? Yeah. I've got some live footage here. I think we've got one more slide. If you can go forward one there. This is the same series. We're good. Um, we're the same series now on a baseline drive. So now the ball starts in the <clears> corner. Again, you probably have two teams of three or four. If you want to make it competitive early on, you may just want to teach the, the rotations and so they get it down that and then fine-tuning it. That's my philosophy is I kind of start something, I let them understand whatever the rotation might be, and then I fine-tune from there. In this case, it's a baseline drive. We get a drag behind. Again, the driver must get a piece of the paint. We reverse pivot away from a defender. That's a point of emphasis. I must get one foot in, throw it back, and then it's live from there. And again, this is where if you're teaching, you know, fly outs, walk outs, the Wahlberg closeout series, whatever, you know, there's a lot of people that 
that spend hours on closeouts. There's a lot of folks that have gone completely away from it. I'm not here to talk about your defensive philosophy, but what we're doing is 0.5 decision-making, and so we play from the baseline there. And, again, dribble drive principles come behind the driver. So we should have some quick film on this. And you can see I was teaching it at a clinic. I do uh, dribble drive clinics. I do uh, high school uh, clinics kind of around. And I was down in Southern California just a couple weeks ago. And here I'm teaching the slot drive one-on-one. -on -one. And this is the beginning of it. And you can see I'm teaching there. Here's the, here's the early, you know, here's how it, what you got to do to start the drill. And now we're talking about dragging behind. We talk about the footwork here. You know, a top foot, a lot of times we teach a stride stop there where you end up with a high foot pivot away from the defense. The ball goes back up and we go live. So you can see this is their first time doing it. So it's a little ugly, but you get the idea. Slot drive, play behind, open, catch and shoot, 0.5 decision. And again, we might get a couple. Hopefully we'll get a drive or two so you could see it. Another catch and shoot. Perfect. We're, we're teaching the 0.5 decision making in a, again, it's a disadvantage for the defense, but we're, we're teaching what we need them to do in our dribble drive offense. Another catch and shoot again, they're early in the teaching process. So they're not quite sure. Do I, do I get all the way out? And so I, I'm telling them the whole time, you know, it's live, but again, it's the first time they don't know who I am. I'm some guy from Oregon and they're, you know, Southern California kids. So again, all catch and shoots. I think we hopefully we can get one drive on this and we'll move to the next slide. There we go. There's a split sprint drive. Now the defender did not play it live, but you can see what we're doing here, guys. We are trying to teach the 0.5 decision making from the slot. And about two minutes later, we went down to the corner. Right now I'm in a fine tuning stage. I've, I've seen them go through a couple times and now we are fine tuning you know, making sure this is a slot drive, making sure we reverse pivot off of it. I'm talking about the footwork on that reverse pivot pass, talking about where the defense would be and where we want that slot behind to be. So I think that pretty much explains it, Mark. We can go to the next one. All right. Are you sure those girls didn't think you were um, Steve Kerr? You know what? The, 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 I've been <laughs> told a while now I look like Steve Kerr. I, I've told people I wish I could swap paychecks with Steve Kerr. That would be the best way to go. Uh, Coach, here's the Russian Coach series. Of <laughs> <laughs> the Russian series. This one involves a cone. Uh, Drew Hanlon used to do these when he'd come out to clinics in Oregon City, so I always used to borrow these. It could be a cone. It could be a chair. It could be a coach standing there. It could be a teammate that's injured. Get him involved. You know, whatever you want to do there. And I've got flags on there that kind of indicate you could do this from any angle, any place. Um, to start, we'll usually do it from here. This creates a slot drive. We have one, one line of players that have the balls, and then the other line that does it, the handoff happens behind the cone. And again, you'll get some cheaters. You'll get some kids that don't want to go all the way around. So that's where you may need to introduce a chair or a coach there. And the handoff should be directly behind that cone. And as they come off of it, the defender now circles to the uh, defend, the, play some defense against the offense who got the handoff behind there. And again, this is where we get the mentality, you know, foul them first. I said that last night. I said it the first night, I believe, the mentality of fouling the uh, defensive player first. You can, you know, some coaches call that the veer series where you're trying to veer in. We're trying to gain space. We're trying to get space. We're trying to control the paint, conquer the middle, Vance used to say. Um, and if we see chest, if that defensive player did a great job getting around there and the offensive player sees chest, we're going to play off too. And that's where your philosophy might be. You're going to teach a rondo. You're going to teach a jump stop step through. You're going to make them cozy with their feet. And at minimum, there will not be a turnover or a bad one-footed running floater. So again, that's part of the first Russian series. Mark, you can go ahead and move it forward. And again, I'm big on, on playing off two if we don't have any kind of big advantage. This one here is a one versus two Russian. I kind of like this. This is new for me. Um, we did this with some guys this weekend out of the local high school. And this is where, again, you have a team of players under the hoop. And then uh, on the wing there, you've got a, a wing and a shooter. And so if the player goes on the low side around a cone, or you could just tell them dribble on the block, 
you can tell them to touch the block. If you don't like cones on the floor, or kids knock them around, you know, you touch the block. If they go high side around there, it's to the wing. And now again, at this point, if the two is open, they shoot it. If they're not open, it's a one more for a corner shooting three. So again, you're teaching again for us in our dribble drive. And if you're a two sided break guy, this happens all the time. Uh, if you get spacing with, with, with dribble drive where you've overloaded or condensed the side, you get this all the time. If you play zone offense, you get this all the time. It's, it's so multi-purpose. I just loved it. I absolutely love it. And so again, if, if, if you get the open shot, it's there. If it's not, it's a one more. If you go to the next one, Mark, I think that one shows if they go uh, from high to low side, you get a baseline drift pass where if three's open, they let it fly. If they're not open, they go one more and the two shoots it. And you can do this with two teams of four, two teams of five, or however many guards you've got in the gym. Or if you're letting everybody shoot threes, just put everybody there and let them work on their decision making. You can dictate action. Also, you can say, hey, we're going one more no matter what. Or you tell the defense, hey, you, you know, you have to close to the corner. And then that that encourages that one more. You could tell the defense, hey, you just react to the play. You can do whatever you want with this. And I, the way I like to play it, you go like two minutes, blue versus white. If they do decide to drive it, coaches, then, well, then we can tell them that that's, it's go time. Don't finish. Now, again, if you get better, you can you can work. But, again, it's, it's such a huge disadvantage that a drag really doesn't seem very realistic to me on that one. So I've never done it that way. So let's go to the next one. This is where we would start now just doing adding a second offensive player. You can see here you now I've, I've taken the line for Russian and put it uh, to the one side of the floor, and I've put an offensive player on the weak side. You know, the handoff happens. The inside player has the ball. The outside player turns the corner. 0-1 attacks. Again, that could be a coach. It could be a, uh, a cone. It could be a chair, whatever you want it to be. And now 0-1 is reading X3 with the mindset of scoring first. Score first, score first, score first. Foul them first. Gain ground, conquer middle. A super aggressive mindset. If X3 helps flat and over, this is where you might be teaching, you know, the, the lift to the wing. If X3 stays in a denial situation, it could be a two-foot stop to a drop. It could be, you know, that X3 just holds and O1 has to make a play. We really emphasize on this one, coaches, to that drive. Try to get inside the elbow. It says if you start getting outside the elbow and you get into game situations, um, game slippage, you start get pushed out, pushed out, pushed out, and you end up playing outside the conquer the middle mentality. So anyway, there's the two-on-two -two version. I think the next one is just the three-on-three -three if you want to move it forward, Mark. Perfect. And the three-on-three -three there, we've just added another player, and you can move the cone around so it ends up being a right-handed drive. You can work from different spots in it. It's it's really pretty basic. Guys, it just gives a slight advantage. Uh, Mark's going to show some ones that have different variations of disadvantage-advantage. I don't want to jump into what he does there. But all I'm doing with the Russian series is trying to put the defense at a slight to moderate disadvantage and get the offensive player with an attack mindset working on, again, conquering space, conquering middle, fouling them first. And then as we add another player and we add another player, we start working our drags and our drops and all that kind of stuff. So it's I really like it. And it can be one day you do the one-on-one, -on -one, next day you do two-on-two, -two, next day you're three-on-three. -three. Maybe you love the three-on-three -three and you're just really doing that a bunch. So, again, it, each team's always a little bit different. And it depends again on on the on the team that you've got and the numbers you've got also. Maybe you need to get the three on three quicker because you just got a lot of bodies. Okay, next one. Cutthroat. This is the last one for me. I want right on time here, Mark. I got about seven minutes. That is perfect. Can you believe it? We are on time. Amazing. Okay, we got some cutthroat here. Everybody's heard cutthroat. I, I think that's if you run camp, um, you, you've you've played cutthroat. Um, the thing I love about four on four cutthroat is, it, you know, it can be live on the catch a lot of different ways. You know, you can have a coach on the baseline. You can have a coach up high. I like to get up high, and um, some days we'll play it where it has to go to me first. That's usually early in the season. And then later in the season, after they've figured things out, they've gotten very quick at their rotations, uh, it gets pretty live pretty quick. And so in the diagram there, you can see four defenders. We start with one. Maybe that day we're working a one-five through cut. 
And that's what we're going to do. Maybe that day we're going to work a nail cut. Maybe that day we're going to work a little ball screen. Maybe we're going to start everything with a, you know, a, a DHO to two as a false motion. Maybe it's a kickback. Maybe one's going to get it, attack the middle, and it's going to be a kickback. The thing I love about it, it's competitive. You keep score. And I, I put this on this last bullet point. I'm going to take a minute or two to talk about it. Um, anybody can do this drill. I think what's been really good for me, and I know I've shared with, with Mark over the couple of years I've gotten to know him, is that, that I've created a point system that, that – um, rewards what I want in my philosophy. You know, my philosophy is, is like Mark had on the, the slide, you know, we want to get a land. We want to be aggressive. We don't get the land. We're going to get fouled. get to the free throw line and we want uncontested threes. So I put a high value of points, let's say plus five for a shot where we get a paint touch and we go off one foot and we kick it out and get a, get a, a made three. And, and again, you're thinking, well, why would you, why would you do something like that? Well, I've studied it enough and I've looked at it enough and, and on the women's side, it might be different than the men's side. So just bear with me here, guys, but the one footed running floater over the top of, you know, four hands up, not just your defender, but the help defender has been a low percentage shot for me over the years, very low percentage. And when I first started teaching dribble drive, I, I just, you know, we're doing one footed floaters guys. We're doing one footed floaters. And I kept watching and I kept watching and I kept counting and then I'd have an assistant, uh, you know, back in high school, we had tons of them. Now it's just two of us coaching in college, but the, we would, we would chart it and, and they're not making shots. They're not making floaters. Even my best player wasn't making floaters. You know, you'd have one or two kids, maybe, maybe one that could really make that one footed floater. Um, you know, we had last year, Brooke Bullock, she could make it all day long. And, and one of my kids in high school toward the end could really make it. But other than that, so, so we give five points, um, for a one foot jump that now we make the decision to kick it out and stick a three. Uh, a regular three is worth four. A back door is worth four. A lay in is worth three or four, depending on, you know, where we were at. Maybe we're shooting too many mid range. We only give one point there for uh, a mid range. And, and again, college, we have shot clock. Most of you guys probably out there have shot clock. You're going to have to shoot a mid range at some point. So again, I, I think the key to a lot of what you do coaches is, is the point system. And these are, these are great small sided ones. I'm studying more small sided ones. I can't wait for Mark and I to talk more about some of the things we're trying to do for our teams next year. But I think, you know, that's kind of the base of, of my small sided games that I've used from the, from the one-on-one -on -one slot drive corner uh, wing to wing to baseline drive where we come behind it there. And then the Russian series, just creating a little disadvantages all the way to the four on four cutthroat where the defense is somewhat set. So this is where I love teaching an action. Let's, let's run a little wave action, a one to five to three. Let's pass and cut. Let's do something there to shift the defense because oftentimes you're not going to get that direct drive on the first catch. So, Mark, you are up. I am right on time. Look at that. Perfect. I think you're muted, Mark. I am muted. There we go. Sometimes that's a good thing. Here we go. <laughs> uh, da -da -da, share screen. Let's share it window all right all right good okay like kurt says uh working on some different things trying to keep it fun trying to keep it to to teach the same thing but maybe different ways so over the course of doing this since 2008 so what's that 14 years or so um you, you start learning new ways. You talk to people like Kurt. You, you seek out people that may know it more than you do, and you, you pick their brains. Uh, Mike Neighbors, Doug Novak, great resources. Those are great people. Great, They run great stuff. And um, this right here, um, before I get started with it, I've, I've, I've gotten a few emails, and what I'm using – is the assist app by Lucio Sports. And if 
you go to luciosports.com, you can get some more information. I just want to throw it out there. If you're interested in the product, you you can I can show you a demo if you want to email me. We can set up a time for a demo. Also, there's a code right there, Coach Hart. If you're interested in getting it, it would save you a little bit of coin um, if you put that in there in their checkout um, to get this software. It's great for teaching your players. I use it with the program. And besides teaching coaches, I use it with my bas- use it in the basketball program. Then I help coach. So here we go. First one, one-on-one pound dribble. Now this is shoulder pressure. So, so you're working on player is in a stance. They're pounding the basketball. They dictate when they go. When they go, it's live. So if you want them to work on X1 can be beneath them or above them. So one day we may say aboves or belows is where they're going to be or right, left. On the baseline, it has to be above or below. So we're going to say, so we would do, we'd put some time on the clock. We'd probably, depending on baskets, place them in different areas. We may have three, four players in a group, but the way it would be is they're in a stance. Pound, 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 pound. So you're working on that explosion out and throwing the ball out. When when people do kickups and they look to attack, I don't know if anybody's what terminology they use is is with guys they used to say don't pee dribble. And and it, without being graphic with it, it was throw the ball out there farther than you can urinate. So we wanted to get them out, get the ball moving out, not just short by their foot dribbles, because you want to be able to get to the paint. We will back this drill up. We're trying to get into that paint and score off one dribble, two at max. If you do three dribbles on the prim and, and you're getting inside, coach will probably agree with me and they're getting the ball stolen. Okay. So these little drills right here, a few one-on-ones, pound dribble, attack. And then you could see now they're having to figure out, do I do inside hand? Do I turn my shoulders? Do I do a rondo move? It, 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 it works. You could play it to points. You can be king of the court with it. Use your imagination. And we will go all around the court five spots. Okay. Uh, another one that I like is being creative. Both players are at the free throw line. The offensive player takes off at midcourt, sprints with the dribble. The defensive player touches the baseline, and then they come back at each other, and they're playing one-on-one. So one-on-one, one-on-one touch from the nail. Uh, Mix it up. Do it from the elbow. Get different angles. You can do it in different places on the floor. One on one elbow to court. So, so the offensive player is going to touch the half court corner area of where they're at. And the defensive player is going to touch the lane line area and baseline opposite of the elbow that they're on. So, let's look at that in a little bit of an animated drawing here. Boom, one on one. So, then you can flip it and play the other way with them. Okay. And so you guys know with the with this with the software, I, I didn't draw this twice. I'm just hitting a button and it just flips it flips the flips the drawing for me. Um do, 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 one on one one on okay, one on one cone. Okay. We'll do this a couple of different ways. If we have the defensive player with the ball, they'll throw the ball to the offensive player above the three-point line. And you keep the cones a little bit tighter. And then, boom. And then they touch whatever side they want to go on. So what if they go left, if they're going to their right, the left cone on the screen, looking at it from the screen, then they would probably attack right hand. If they would have touched the other cone, they would attack left hand. And they're playing a little bit of one-on-one. There's that advantage, giving the offense a little bit of advantage beating them through the gap. Now the defensive gets, player gets back, putting them in jail, putting them on your back, deciding, okay, do I have the advantage to go off one leg? Because the way I teach it is if they are on your – if they're slightly behind you, 
you're going, we want to go off one leg. If they're putting pressure on your hip, we're going to stride, stop, and play off two feet. We're going to do stride, stop finishes. So we can get to a, get to a rondo. We can get to a stride, stop, lean, veer them, and, and do different types of finishes. Now, this is one of my two-on-two on, two on two drills. We're bad at going left-handed. And a lot of teams play nail defense. So this is like a slot, slot, nail cheat. So we swung the basketball and we want to get what the term is split catch and go straight and, and drive it. We want to throw it, split catch it, stampede it, whatever the fancy terminology you guys want to use to that. And we're playing. X2 is going to try to get back into the action and put pressure on, but we're working on slot drives off of a quick reversal or one more pass, that type of action. Uh, da, 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 da. Kurt already did slot, slot, closeout, slot, corner, closeout. So what else do I have? Okay, slot, post. And you can do this from various spots on the floor. I like doing slot, post here. This is the side-by-side, -side, pound dribble, taking it, taking that pound dribble concept again. And they're side by side here. They're putting pressure on them. They're pounding. And I do have a video clip of this one. And they're driving. And now it's reading. Do I finish? Did they help? Do I kick? Let's see. Do I have it here? Here we go. Don't have them in full camera here. But she's pounding. See how she put her in jail? Now, girls, girls will do this. Something I learned is they'll, they like to catch in the post and sometimes dribble to get themselves a better angle to make the layup. It's okay. okay. So let me show that again. And here's, I mean, and this is probably, this is the first day we're doing this drill. I just threw up a camera. My, I'm, I'm mid-court with my phone. And see how she, she has the advantage and she's putting the girl on her back. She, she's, she's learning by doing this drill on her own, how to put a player on her back. She kind of stops, does the Chris Paul. Okay. She probably could have shot that. That's one of those gray areas, but, and now she makes her decision. Do I finish with my left hand? Do I make a one dribble and make a hook? Okay. So that's that little. That's camp drills. You can do that with, you can do, if you have six baskets, you can put, put X number of kids in a hoop. You have 30 some kids, 40 some kids, put them all around the gym and just do these. Okay. Slot, slot, cheat, slot. Okay. So now, now these are blinds. I call these blind drills. So X1 is you could see is behind in front of the offensive player with their back to them, and the ball, the offensive player is going to place the ball on their back. Once they remove it, it's live. Okay, I have a video clip of it here. So now you're playing your rules. So we're doing, so on this one, I call it stretch, which is a kick-up spot for us. Stretch, corner, post is how I would call out the drill. We need stretch. We need, we need to get to the stretch, corner, and post spots. And we're going to play. Put some time on the clock. Make it competitive. Score it. Offense, defense. However you want to do it. Typically, we'll play two minutes. Or one minute. One and a half minutes. One team gets the ball. Then flip it. Whatever team has the most points wins. Um, kids love it. Okay, we're outside. COVID practice. Boom. Okay. And they're and they're and they're finding solutions playing out of dribble drive concepts. One more time for you because so you can see it. So he has the ball on his back. And you see how he tried to throw it? And now it's neutral. People talk about advantage, uh, neutral, advantage, disadvantage. Right now. There's no, 
no one's no one's in control. It's neutral. Offense and defense are side by side. Okay. He's side by side. Okay. I switched to the girls. We started doing stride stops. That was a jump stop. It could be done either way. That was a jump stop. Little, little short hop. That player sunk in. There's a there's a kick up. Post decided he was a newbie. He didn't know what he was doing. He should have been relocating, but that's okay. It's not always going to be perfect. That's where after the drill is over, you could say, hey, have a, have a coach on the baseline. Hey, you should have been relocating. You should have been relocating. Teaching and coaching up through small-sided games. Okay. And okay. Same, same thing. I just moved it to different spots. So we struggle going left. So I like to do slots going left a lot to, to get that drive going left. So ball is going to be on the player's back. We have a slot, a corner, and a post. I like to do these with three-player actions and get the post involved. And we will rotate typically slot post corner so all three all players are moving to all the spots so they get used to playing everywhere within these small sided games here it is okay she read it she read no sternum no help i'm in a racket that uh da, 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 da. Do I have? Do I have? I think that's it. Um, let me let me just draw them up here. So you can do it. You can do blind forty four. So that would be. You can go this way if you want. That's defense, and we're gonna go. Okay. Place the ball on the back. You could start it where you tell this player that they have to cut. And then we can play. You can, you, can, you can make the rules however you want and then play out of it. You can put them flat to the baseline. It's it's blood drills in a, in a, in a, a sense in the half court. And you're really doing a lot of teaching. So with these style is you're as a coach not having to pass. So if there's one of you at practice, you can be doing a lot of these camp style drills where you're not having to pass and do the blood drills that you learned if it was the first time listening to them last night. So those are some some of Kurt's favorite ones. Some of those were new that I started doing. Uh, just hopefully we gave you some small sided games to take for you to teach at summer camp or training camp, whatever you want to refer to it as. Um, we, we, we gave you a lot of stuff.